So it's Mark from Greenleaves. Um, those of you that have watched this channel before know that I took out a bet uh, about a month and a half ago, uh, which eventually totaled some £300 on the um, possibility of the uh, uh, of Great Britain leaving the European Union by the 29th of March. And as has now become obvious, we haven't. I'm giving, doing this video some three weeks after the date that we should have left, which is after not only the uh, date which is written into uh, UK law, but also the date after the first extension. And uh, now we have been granted a second extension down to the 31st of March. It's interesting why we use the words granted an extension by the European Union. Let's not forget that the law actually states that we would leave, the UK law, that we would leave on the 29th of March. Now, I've lost the bet, which has made family life a, a little bit uh, more tense than it used to be. And it's... Um, not a small amount of money, I'm not a, uh, a gambling man, and uh, therefore uh, this is a cost I uh, uh, didn't need. I thought that my odds at five to one, six to one, eventually it went up to uh, 14 to one, and I was thinking, this is just unbelievable, it's got to happen. Obviously I'm a, um, a fool, but I was told on so many occasions by the Prime Minister uh, that no deal was going to happen on the 29th of March. I was told that repeatedly, so were the Commons, so were the, uh, the media. Um, we were also told that no deal was uh, better than a bad deal, and clearly after so many rejections, Theresa May cannot have been under, under anything other than an impression that her deal was a bad deal. Her treaty, rather, was a bad deal. Um, no deal is better than a bad deal. 29th of March, you would have thought she would have held on to her views. The uh, uh, Commons was against her, but nevertheless she had a legal route forward. I suppose the key point I didn't realise in taking on the bet was that the European Union has itself got the right to write in our exit date into our law. Even though our law is set by the Commons, ultimately it is inferior law to the European Union's own decisions inside, it would appear, just the Council of Ministers. It doesn't even go to the Parliament. Uh, therefore, the uh, Council of Ministers decide that our extension date is, to the, uh, 20, uh, is, is now to the 31st of October. And so it is. And it's overwriting the British law, which says Two years after we exercised Article 50, we will leave the European Union. Therefore, you can plan your parties for the 29th of March. And indeed, I did that as well. Who really is the fool? You see, it seems to me that I've lost £300 by ultimately uh, trusting a politician. Trusting politicians who state their views repeatedly over many, many months. Politicians who've been elected on a manifesto to leave the European Union uh, in 2017 on the back of a referendum decision that was carried out in 2016. Itself authorised by a Commons vote in 2015, uh, which itself <clears throat> was uh, mandated by the manifesto commitments of the winning party in 2015. And it's not as though that referendum hadn't been very long in the calling. Who's the bigger fool? I've lost £300. It seems to me that the politicians have lost their credibility. My uh, own political party uh, was part of the call for the referendum. So, for example, in the Euro election in 2014, uh, the Green Party was calling for a referendum on membership of the European Union. In most of the previous elections, we'd either been calling for a referendum on membership, we had been calling for a referendum on the EU single currency, we'd been opposed to the single currency, we were part of the anti-Maastricht alliance. There were so many things about our um, appeal as a party that was uh, deliberately designed to encourage Eurosceptics to defect to it. And uh, yet, 
in the European Parliament uh, the uh, uh, other day. We've got Molly Scott Cato, MEP for the South West and Gibraltar and lead candidate for the Green Party in the 2019 Euro elections. Uh, claiming that she was proud that uh, Britain was still a member of the European Union. And this, despite all of those decisions, which you would have thought would commit us committers as a party and a movement and politicians such as her. £300. I feel a fool. But who's the bigger fool? Politicians generally now have discredited themselves. They haven't followed through on the decision that we took. And it's not acceptable to simply carry on saying, oh, well, we're intending to and extend all the time. But perhaps the biggest fool of all is the European Union itself. The European Union has written in to our law the date when we might expect it to leave. And they keep changing their mind. And unlike the British lawmaking process, which is painful, involves wailing and the gnashing of teeth, um, the uh, European uh, legal changes can just simply be made by the Council of Ministers itself. This is not a trustworthy way to uh, proceed. They have changed our law as a result of a dinner a few days ago. A dinner at which the British Prime Minister wasn't even pre present. This is a, a very arbitrary way to be deciding law. We cannot proceed on this basis. We cannot properly plan. It means that people like businesses and institutions don't know where they are because the legal process inside the European Union is not transparent. We're not really properly members of it. And it is superior to British law. This is absolute chaos. I think this is the reason why people are despairing of mainstream politicians, including the Green Party, at the moment.